In this video, I'm going to talk about how to update the attributes of your items in your item list or your product and service list. So for example, I happen to be in my products and services list where you can simply go by clicking on sales and then under sales, you should have a menu that takes you to products and services. In your products and services list, if you go edit any of the items, you will have information such as description, price, income account, cost, expense account, and you may wanna update that information in batch. So for some context before we get started, QuickBooks does have a built-in import feature for you to import new items into the item list or the product and services list. To get there, you click on the drop-down menu in this screen, and then you click on where it says import. You can also click on the gear menu anywhere in QuickBooks, and then under tools, it says import data. When you click on import data, you're gonna go into the option for products and services, click on that, and then you're gonna go into the import screen. There is a download sample file option where you click on that and you open a sample file in Microsoft Excel, and you get to see exactly what the sample file looks like so you know which fields can be imported. So you have information like item name, sales description, SKU, sales price, whether it's taxable or not, income account, purchase description, purchase cost, expense account, quantity on hand only for inventory items that are not in your inventory list, you can import the quantity on hand. You cannot import quantity on hand for existing items that are already in QuickBooks. Reorder point, inventory asset, and the date of the new, the new items with inventory quantity on hand, so QuickBooks knows when to create that initial entry for inventory. Anyway, we're gonna skip the template that was just showing you that it's there for your reference. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into our products and services list or our products uh, and services item list, and we're gonna export the current list that we have of items. Now, one thing to keep in mind is you're gonna have items that are inactive as well, and we're gonna make the assumption that we're not gonna be updating the inactive items. But when we click on more, the little more button on the top right, and then we click on run report, it will take you to your item list report or your product and services list report. And by default, uh, some columns show, but you may wanna show more things. So we'll click on the little gear menu, click where it says show more, and then we pick and choose which additional columns we want to show. So we want to show the income account, for example, we want to show the expense account, we wanna show the purchase description, we want to show preferred vendors, so there's multiple things that we can show, we can show SKU, and the other things that we can show like create date, created by, those things cannot be imported anyway, so we don't need to export those. Uh, the default class, we cannot import that. Yes, we can order the, re we can update the reorder point and we can uh, update taxables. Essentially, those fields that you see checked there are the only ones that can be put into that spreadsheet uh, to import. So, so once we click out of that, you have your entire item list in a format that you can export. Next step we're gonna do is we're gonna export this. We'll scroll here to the right and then we'll click on the little export button and then we're gonna choose export to Excel. We'll click on export to Excel and a new file should be downloaded that you can open in Microsoft Excel so you can now manipulate this. Now, unfortunately, QuickBooks gives you a really crappy formatted Excel file. So you actually have to know uh, how to manipulate this Excel file before you can do anything with it to import it. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna delete the first column that's empty, delete that, get rid of that 100%, we don't need that. And then I'm gonna get rid of one, two, three, four. The first four rows, I'm gonna delete that as well. You must do that because the formatting on these exports are really, really quirky. Then we're gonna scroll all the way down and we're gonna get rid of the neck, the last three rows. You have to get rid of the last three rows because QuickBooks um, imports a really strange concatenated sort of grouped cell, merged cell that it is gonna give you problems if you try to import with it. So we're gonna delete that as well. And essentially we're giving ourselves a, a flatter file to work with. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all, go to data and make it into a filter. Uh, just so I can do sorting uh, if I wanted to. So for example, I wanna sort these by type. So I have all my inventory and then service and then non-inventory, you're gonna see them all listed there. Then I can also sort by description or by account. Whatever I wanna do, I can, I can sort these. 
Now, notice that my accounts are mostly mapped to this income account called old income account, mapped to items, I've made it very, very explicit. And then the expense accounts are mapped to old COGS account mapped to items. So before I do the import, I just wanna show you for some context. I'm gonna go back into um, QuickBooks Online here, and I'm gonna pull a, let's pull a profit and loss report. So I'm gonna go into reports and pull a, where are you, profit and loss? There you go, profit and loss. And then I'm going to show a profit and loss report, let's say for the last uh, couple of years. Then I'm gonna group this by year. Where am I here? Where's my year, fiscal year? And then click on run report. So now I see everything uh, grouped by year for me. I can do also a calendar year. It might be a little bit easier to read. So now we get to see uh, our PL by fiscal year or by, by, by calendar year. And then if I go all the way down and then look at this account here, called all income account mapped, and then I have dollar amounts associated with it. You can see them right there. So that's where all my sales attached to items are being mapped to. And then if I scroll down somewhere in my chart of accounts, I also see right here, old COGS account mapped to items. I see a dollar amount there. Essentially, after I import the items, we want to just go back into this report and see what happens to the mapping because we're not just changing information in the item list. And if you're only changing description and price, okay, that's fine. But if you're gonna change the underlying account, you have to be careful that you can effectively change your financial statements. Maybe you want that, maybe you don't want that. But if you don't want that, then you gotta be careful using this tool because if you do change the underlying income or expense accounts, QuickBooks will go back retroactively and change that in your behalf. So you might not want that. So anyway, uh, let's go into our chart of accounts here and we're gonna create a new account. I'm gonna go to new, and then I'm gonna create a new income account, and I'm gonna select uh, the tax form. I have to select sales of product income when I do inventory, just because QuickBooks requires this uh, tax form type or detail type to be the one you choose if you're doing inventory. And then under account name, we're gonna put new mapped account for sales. Okay, so I'm creating a brand new account. I'm, I'm gonna add a couple of exclamation marks, so it's pretty obvious. Then I'm gonna click on save, and that creates the new income account that I'm going to batch edit uh, in the item list via the Excel export in a second. Then I'm gonna create another account here. Let me do expenses, and I'm gonna create a cost to goods sold account, and the category needs to be supplies and materials if you're gonna manipulate inventory items. And then I'm gonna call this new COGS account mapped, and then three exclamation marks, and then click on save. Okay, boom. So I created both of those accounts. If I go back into my profit and loss report, just one more time to double check, sanity check, make sure I understand what I'm doing. Let me go back and pull up a couple of years and then do uh, calendar years again, click on run. Uh, you will notice that, I'm gonna collapse this here. You will notice that all my old accounts are there, but the new accounts are not here anywhere. And the reason for that is because I have no transactions under the new accounts and I have no items mapped to the new account. So that's a really important point to make prior for us doing anything. Now, while we're at this, I'm gonna leave the screen here. I'm gonna go into the sales uh, uh, left navigation bar and then click right there where it says products and services. I'm gonna right click and open a new tab. Uh, that way I don't lose my PL so I can go back and refresh that later. And then in the item list, in the products and services list, I'm gonna update one of these items. So I'm just gonna come in here and just double check that it is an item that is currently mapped to a transaction. So let me, let me pull up here a detail report and then let's see what items, let me click on one of these transactions and let's see if there's any items uh, in here. So we have this item called Design 12. So I'm gonna focus on this one item called Design 12, change that item to then go back into my reports and make sure I understand exactly what's happening with the remapping of the accounts. So I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna search Design 12. So we got Design 12, there's my item. Click on Edit. And then I'm gonna change just this account, just this one. I'm gonna change it to the new mapped account. And then go back here and do the new uh, cost to goods sold account. So I'm changing the underlying account for this uh, item uh, called Design 12. Then I'm gonna click on Save and Close. And then it says, do you also wanna update memorized transactions? I can say yes or no, but let's just say yes on that. 
and I saved, I changed what the item is. If I go edit the item, there's new accounts associated with the item. If I go back into my profit and loss report, which is kind of the important piece here, the thing that we want to just understand what's happening is the account got changed. So now it's under new mapped account, but not all of the sales, just whatever sales affected that item. So you can do that one by one. You can go in there, go one by one and change that. If I go back into products and services, I'm going to X out of that and I'm going to pick um, a different type of item, not an inventory item, but maybe a service item. If I actually change these, I'm going to change this one to the new, the new mapped account or the new, let's say the new uh, COGS account. Let's do a new uh, COGS account. Notice that there's a checkbox that says also update this account in historical transactions. So when the item is a service or a non-inventory, it would ask you whether or not you want to change it. But when the item is inventory, it changes it for you regardless. So you got to be very careful about that and understand the mechanics of what's happening. I'm going to do the same thing here for the new income account. Where's my new, my new income account? Click on save and close. And if there happen to be any sales with the item, which is possible that there isn't, um, those accounts would be uh, remapped uh, historically with all the transactions. So that's enough context. Now we understand exactly what's going on and what we are about to do. I'm going to go back and open up that spreadsheet. And essentially what I want to do is change a whole bunch of information and batch from the spreadsheet. So I'm going to go into description and type here new description one, two, three. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to change this uh, for some of the items, not all of them, some of the items. And notice that um, there's a whole bunch of different numbers happening here as uh, Excel updates all these descriptions. Okay, fine. Under prices, I'm going to put $45 even and update a whole bunch of items and make it $45 even. I'm just doing this um, to make it a lot more obvious. Like in, in the real world, you know, you wouldn't make everything the same price, right? You would change it to uh, whatever price price you're supposed to have. And then under cost, we're going to make this, let's say $25 even, and then copy and paste that down. So that gives you a good general idea where we are in, in terms of importing uh, changes, things like description, price, cost. Now let's talk about uh, contextually the same thing we were talking about earlier, which is changing the accounts being mapped. So let's go back into uh, the chart of accounts really quick and just want to make sure that we are that we have the exact spelling of the accounts. So this one's called new mapped account for sales. I'm going to copy that. That way I have the exact wording. I'm going to paste that in here and then I'm going to copy and paste that down or uh, drag it down. So basically every single account, it's basically using that income account. And then for COGS, let's do the same. Uh, this one's called new account, new COGS account mapped. We'll copy that, go back into our spreadsheet and paste that. And again, I'm going to repeat this one more time. In the real world, you probably wouldn't map every single item to the same account. I'm just doing this to make it very obvious for illustration purposes that essentially all of my items are now going to report to this new account. And let me save that and go back into QuickBooks and go back into a profit and loss. They're all going to report to that account. So essentially, we're going to see this old income account mapped, those t numbers for these two years. We're going to see um, essentially those are going to get cleared out 100%. And same thing for the old account that we had mapped, this 35,000, that's going to get cleared out 100% as well. So keep that in mind that this is going to happen when you, um, when you import changes to your chart of accounts to your item list uh, mapping to the, to a different chart of accounts. So anyway, let's go into the gear menu and let's go into import data and let's go into products and services. Let's go into browse and let's select that document I was working with, which is again, once again, for context, that's that document that you were seeing on the screen uh, right here where it has the items, the descriptions, everything would change. So we'll save that. I can X out of my Excel. Uh, now, after I, I bring in my my new spreadsheet, I click on Next. Uh, QuickBooks is going to ask me, all right, how do you want to map this? And just make sure that your all your headers in your columns match whatever spreadsheet you have. In this specific case, because I exported the report from, um, from QuickBooks anyway, 
most of these headers are, are already um, already uh, matched in terms of mapping. But if something's missing, just make sure you you come in there and you change whatever's missing. Okay, like for example, this skew is missing, and uh, I guess I didn't have a skew uh, column in my in my spreadsheet anyway. So let's go into next, and now you're gonna get a preview screen letting you know, hey, this is a, this is what we came up with. Uh, these are all the changes that we're importing. Unfortunately, the way the screen is laid out, a lot of these things are sort of truncated, um, but you see them there. They just the the the, the preview is there, um, and then there's a little, some little check boxes to whether this item is one that you buy, sell, or track for inventory. You don't need to change any of that stuff. Just trust information that came from the spreadsheet. Then you're gonna click on import. You're gonna let it do its thing depending how big the item list is, um, it might be more or less. Now, if your item already exists, you're gonna get an error. It says, hey, we couldn't import this data. These are not new items in QuickBooks. So it's not gonna work if you just click import. You actually need to scroll all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, and you're gonna see down here on the bottom where it says, overwrite all values for each product and service that you import with identical name. This cannot be undone. So it's warning you that there's no undo button. But in either case, there's no undo button for like 90% of stuff we do in QuickBooks. So it's like kind of a moot exercise to tell you that this cannot be undone. But anyway, that little checkbox, that's key. If you click on that, then you're letting the import system know, all right, fine, I understand. If the items are the same, go ahead and overwrite them, including accepting the fact that any items that I bring in are going to be changed historically. So all 177 items were updated. If I go back into my products and services, um, and uh, let's go into products and services here, we actually can see across the board, pretty obvious, all the items have been changed. If I click on edit on any of the items, I see that we have the new mapped account and we have the new description in there. And you know some of the items had uh, the $45 change, depending on which ones I changed. So you get to see the price change there as well. So everything got updated, but now, the moment of truth is, if we go back to the profit and loss report and we see uh, the history, did that change my history? So let's double check that. We'll do this by year one more time. This generally, it's easier to, to see when you do it by year. And then we'll collapse and we'll see, are any of the old accounts still there? No, not, they're not. Everything, all, all the money, 100%, was remapped to this new uh, mapped accounts. Uh, for sale, we we see no no other linkages to the old accounts here. Let's do one more year here because originally we had done 2024 as well. So here we go. So everything is now mapped to the new account. There are no transactions linked to the old account. Same thing with cost of goods sold. Notice that everything is being mapped to the new cost of goods sold account. So that's it. That's how you import items, uh, descriptions, prices, and even accounts, and retroactively change your financial statements by importing your item list from Excel. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.